can you lift your hands to heaven and ask the lord for a very definite encounter by his word go ahead and pray father give me an encounter tonight by your word an encounter in the name of jesus by your word king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you you're the king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god i worship you very simple song the king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god i worship you one more time king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sin. Away. Father, we bless you. Speak to our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Psalm 102, then we'll read verse 13. I'll be teaching tonight on times and seasons. Psalms 102 and verse 13. Let me begin by encouraging our hearts that the strength of the believer in this kingdom is the degree and the extent of light that you have the extent of your spiritual illumination is where your strength is derived from hallelujah when a believer does not have high level spiritual illumination you will be around spiritual things but you will never have the power to enjoy the blessings that come so um conferences like this like i would always observe is an opportunity for us to be exposed to the light the various dimensions of the light of the kingdom hallelujah when we have high level illumination and we understand the speakings of god then we can connect our faith with understanding then it will produce for us hallelujah praise the name of the lord Tonight's teaching will bless you and I pray that your heart be opened in the name of Jesus. Let's read together Psalm 102 and verse 13. Ready? One to read. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Let's read the B part together for the time. Ready? One to read. For the time to favor her. Yea. The set time. Hallelujah. The Bible records that Jesus wept two times, principally um, as revealed in Scripture. The first time he wept was in John chapter 11 when he was at the grave of Lazarus. When he was told that Lazarus was gone, he cried and oh how he loved him on 11 35 the bible says jesus wept and then they said oh how that he loved him 
he wept as an expression of his his love and compassion that he had for lazarus the second time he would weep was in luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 and we'll begin our reading from verse 42 luke 19 42 the bible says that he stood over jerusalem and he began to weep and he said if thou hast known even in this thy day the things that belong on your peace he says for now they your eyes let's jump for the sake of time to 44 the bible says that they will go through all these things these negative things it says because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation hallelujah he wept because many things would pass them by they would become victims of life victims of all kinds of demonic oppressions and he says simply because you did not know the time of your visitation in second first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 a popular scripture first chronicles 12 32 it says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times this was the advantage they had over their brethren that they could discern times they could discern seasons he says to know what israel ought to do and the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command may that be your testimony jesus now god designed in fact let's go to genesis genesis chapter one let me show you something uh before i begin to teach genesis chapter one please what we know as the creation story now verse 14 genesis 1 verse 14 the bible says please give us verse 14 and god said let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs help me for seasons for days and for years so god made light and he used those lights to divide seasons that immediately tells you that our activities on earth is a function of times and seasons please write it down if you must write as far as our work on earth is concerned we subscribe to the law of times and seasons that means that everything you do on earth must be done in time and must be done with respect to time in ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 the preacher gave us a greater perspective and he said to everything say everything one more time please to everything there is a season just stop there please look very carefully to everything when the bible says to everything it means there is nothing under the earth that will defy the law of times and seasons to everything there is a season hallelujah and a time for every purpose under the earth let's go to verse 2 now it says a time to be born to be born is not the issue it says a time to be born a time to die a time to plant please look up when a woman gets pregnant and after three months under any kind of condition she feels like giving birth do you call that delivery are we together why timing timing the same thing she's afraid of now is the same thing you'll be praying for when she gets to nine months you name them and for one you do not you call that losing a child and for another you congratulate and call it delivery simply because of timing are we together a time to be born then it says a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted verse 3 please a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up let's have one more verse a time to weep and a time to laugh 
a time to mourn and a time to dance the constant word in all of these verses is time so everything we do under the sun governed by the law of time and seasons that is the first thing i want you to two the second thing i want you to know is that god himself in his dealings with men he respects times and seasons god does not dwell in time god does not need time but when it has to do with his dealings with man he limits his operation to subscribe to times and seasons hallelujah in the greek there are many words that express times and seasons but i want us to discuss two of them we're looking at times and seasons the first is the word chronos c h r o n o s the word chronos chronos means the passage of time the sequential movement of time or the quantitative movement of time that means seconds minutes hours the passage of time is what the bible calls chronos hallelujah and then there is another word called kairos k-a-i-r-o-s they're all greek words that express time kairos kairos means a defining moment it means an opportune time it doesn't just mean a passage of time it means a moment in time where certain things whatever happens within that time will have a prolonged effect on an individual hallelujah so we have chronos the passage of time the quantitative passage of time by the minute by the second by the hour and then we have kairos it talks about moments seasons within time hallelujah are we learning already now please listen there is a dimension of grace that is released in every time and in every season there is a dimension of grace that comes with every time and comes with every season in other words there are supernatural possibilities that if you have the discernment you can experience them simply because you align with certain times there's no time to deal with the story in john chapter 5. john chapter 5 is a classic example the man at gate beautiful remember the story the bible says that man had was there for 38 years and the bible tells us that at a certain time not every time if he just fell in the water at a time that the angel did not come to stay he would just come out wet but not healed the bible says at a certain time an angel would come and steer the water and whoever was discerning to fall first as merciful as god is you would think that when the water was stirred so many people should come and yet that time could only accommodate one discerning person the first person i don't know what was wrong with that man that two years became five became ten became fifteen became 20 became 30 became 35 jesus had to look at that man and the bible says he was there for a long time what was his offense he was near the water are we together he knew what to do but he missed the timing thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come so there are graces and there are possibilities that are attached to every time in fact in ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 11 the bible says he makes all things beautiful not every time please give it to us ecclesiastes 3 11 3 and 11 he makes all things all things beautiful he had made everything beautiful in his time notice he never said your time he had made everything beautiful in his time 
that means if you can understand the sequence of god's spiritual timing and the way he walks your life will be an expression of the beauty and the glory of god if you are with me say amen, amen. he makes all things beautiful in his time Time is so important in scripture that in Psalm 90 and verse 12, the psalmist gave us a very strong counsel. It was a prayer. He said in your prayer, ensure that you pray and say, oh, teach us. So teach us to number our days. Why? That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. There is a relationship between your walking in wisdom and understanding times and seasons. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom paul was mentoring the church in ephesus in ephesians chapter 5 i'm giving you a few scriptures before i begin to teach 5 from verse 15 ephesians 5 and verse 15 he says see then that ye walk circumspectly the word circumspectly means accurately walk accurately not as fools but as wise where is the wisdom there redeeming the time the word redeem means to buy back are we together he's saying redeeming the time because the days are evil verse 17 hopefully we'll get into that one tomorrow he said wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is redeeming the time because the days are evil one last scripture john chapter 9 and verse 4 jesus himself was teaching john chapter 9 let's read together these are the words of jesus ready one to read i must walk the works of him that sent me uh-huh while it is day hold on hold on why would jesus sound so limited while it jesus almighty jesus the word of god the incarnate of the father he's saying even for me since i have become a man i have submitted to times and seasons in other words if i waste my time there will be consequences even as far as redemption is concerned i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says the night cometh. he didn't say it may come the night certainly will come and when night comes no man no man provided you are a man you will not be able to walk i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says the night cometh when no man can walk again are we together now most believers do not understand the power of time i have taught and i have read from scripture that the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not over things you can have dominion over things but you are not truly walking in dominion until you can have dominion over time the greatest desire of a dying man is not more things the greatest desire of a dying man is not more influence for instance in in, in um, Isaiah chapter 38, the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah pleaded for more time. That was his prayer. Give me time. Because the moment you have time, every other thing can be restored in time. Are we together? You can see that when God wants to show men mercy, he restores years more than things. I will restore the years, not just the things you can lose money and get it back you can lose your health and go to the hospital but if you lose time that is the end of it in fact did you know that you call the entire journey from when a man is born to when he dies life time life time for as long as his spirit can coexist with his body if it is two days then his lifetime is two days if it is 100 years his lifetime is 100 years you must understand timing because most believers think all times are convenient for everything 
at the end of this teaching god will plant in you a sense of urgency there will be a divine sense of urgency in your life and you will know that whatever wastes your time is of the devil because that is the most expensive commodity are we together second to the salvation that you have gotten in christ the gift of time time is an equalizer given to everybody with all the advancement in technology nobody has been able to add more time as an asset we have mastered the way of creating robot artificial intelligence to help accelerate us but god in his wisdom ensured that time remains the equalizer for all men if it is morning in nigeria provided you are in nigeria it will not hurry and become afternoon for you it goes slowly and everybody submits to it 12 o'clock in nigeria is 12 o'clock for everybody six o'clock in nigeria is six o'clock for everybody within that time zone everybody helplessly has to wait for that time are we together so time is a blessing it is an equalizer unfortunately unfortunately when satan comes to a man's life the first thing he does is to study your understanding about time when he finds out that you do not have an appreciation of the blessing and the divine significance of time he will occupy you with activities so that you will think just because you are engaging in several activities it means that you are working with time he says redeem the time because the days are evil i believe that you are blessed by this message by apostle jesu ashama and I want you to believe and work and redeem every time. There is no time to waste. Recover all your time and remain blessed in the name of Jesus. If you have not subscribed to this channel, endeavor to subscribe and remain blessed. And may the good Lord always bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.